Hey alligators, what's up? It's Sally Hardesty and today's video is going to be a conspiracy theory. I don't do these as often as I would like to so I'm really going to try to film some more for you guys but the main reason for that is probably because I don't like doing the mainstream ones. I could easily do one about Area 51 and 9-11 but I feel like so many other YouTubers have already talked about those so if you type them in YouTube like 10 other people will come up talking about it and I don't want to just like rip off their video because it's going to be basically the same information. Not that I would intentionally do that but that would just be the outcome. It would be like the same sort of thing. So I try my best to research and do conspiracies that I find really fun and I believe in, but also not many other people have touched on and I haven't seen anybody really talk about this one. I feel like new information came out not too long ago on this whole topic. I don't know if it's taboo because it is Adolf Hitler to talk about this, but I'm going to anyways because I am like fully convinced. Conspiracy theorists believe that Adolf Hitler escaped World War II and lived out in Argentina secretly. He did not commit suicide in 1945 as history states. If you guys are not familiar with Adolf Hitler, um, you should probably just click out of this video because he's really, really well known for being a mass murderer and the leader of the Nazis and all that stuff. He committed suicide with his wife, Eva, in 1945 in the bunker and he put a bullet through his head. They carried out the bodies that same day. The Germans did, right? His people burned them and then the next day, he was announced dead on the German radio, which was May 1st, 1945. But the Battle of Berlin was going down, so nobody could really check on it and confirm that he was in fact dead. So then the day afterwards, May 2nd, 1945, they dug up where Hitler was buried and found a body double. It was somebody else who looked like Hitler, but clearly was not Hitler. Somebody with a mustache, all that stuff. And so people were like, where is Hitler? We're not saying that this was there in place of Hitler, but where is Hitler? Because this clearly is not him. Did he actually die? Did he get away? I don't understand. Joseph Stalin and Dwight Eisenhower claimed that they didn't believe he was dead, that they think that he did escape to Argentina. So that is very coincidental and ironic because one, nobody was able to witness this. Nobody actually saw their dead bodies up close. They saw a couple of bodies being carried out of the bunker that could have belonged to anyone, including this dummy replacement that they dug up from the ground. Also, the fact that the Germans were the ones who pronounced him dead. It was not the Allies who have no reason to lie because they want him to die. But the Germans, they could easily just tell their people that and that's what they're going to believe. And three, the fact that nobody was able to uncover his remains. If that body did not belong to Hitler, then where is Hitler? Nobody really knew. The FBI didn't buy it either. They went searching for him across across the world for years. It wasn't until 23 years later when the Soviet Union came out and said that they had his remains this whole time, but they just now wanted to release that information. Really coincidental and ironic considering this whole time, it's been said that nobody knew where his body was, nobody could prove or had hard evidence to show that he did in fact commit suicide. But all of a sudden, 23 years later, after people have been suspecting that he did get away, they wanna come out with this new evidence, right? So what they had were a jawbone that supposedly, allegedly belonged to Adolf Hitler and a skull, a fragment of a skull that had a bullet hole through it, just as described in his suicide where he shot a bullet through his head. So people were like, okay, this makes sense now. He really did commit suicide. Everyone no longer thought it was a conspiracy theory that he escaped. It wasn't until 2009 when an American did a DNA test on the skull only to find that it belonged to a 40 year old woman. So it was a fraud. It was a dummy. It did not belong to Hitler. That's just what they put out there. So the media would shut up and people would think that he was dead and stop looking for him. So this raised a lot of questions. Everyone who at one point thought that he escaped and then thought that he died now thought that he escaped again because this just made it even more obvious that they were trying to cover this up. So this brings us back to the investigative report in 1945 when Adolf Hitler died with his wife Eva. The guy who wrote it was a professor in the study of medieval history, which makes no sense. He is in no way qualified to be writing this in the first place. But when somebody dies and there isn't actual proof like a body, you have to rely on witnesses. And so in the report, there were people who came out and said that they saw this, they saw the body, this and that, but that doesn't make any sense because nobody actually saw this happen. They could have heard a gunshot, which totally obviously happened because somebody died, but I believe that it was the impersonator of Hitler and his wife, Eva. It was two other people that were not actually them that were shot and murdered in that bunker that day. But nobody actually actually saw this physically happen with their own two eyes and when the bodies were carried out, nobody was at close enough distance to really be able to tell if it was Hitler and his wife or two other completely different people. And also the people who were interrogated by the Soviet investigators, mind you, not even the guy who wrote this report, later came out and retracted their statements as witnesses. So I think that they just lied
lied and just said things because it doesn't make any sense. Nobody actually saw this happen. So his report of his death is completely invalid. It's misinformation. It's just not true. But they were able to cover this up somehow because again, it's the Germans telling everybody this. So they're naturally going to believe their people, you know? Hitler's secretary, his name is Martin Bormann, knew everything about Hitler. He had his best interest. He was very, very close to Hitler, probably the closest person at the time. He had come up with this mastermind plan. Allegedly, World War II was just getting really, really bad and he knew that he was going to have to eventually go into hiding. And the best case would be for everyone to think that he died so nobody would go out looking for him and trying to harm him. Like I mentioned already, conspiracy theorists believe that two dummy bodies were in fact murdered while the real Adolf Hitler and his wife Eva were able to escape through the rat lines, which were underground tunnels where a lot of fugitive Nazis escaped through because they were basically like underground cities. They had everything you needed for survival. And so it would have made a lot of sense if that's the way that they escaped because nobody would have seen them besides the people who were on their side like the other Nazis. And this isn't even like speculation. Like there's proof that these underground rat lines existed. People have visited them and a lot of other people have escaped through them. So in 1943, a top ranking Nazi admiral said that he would build a impregnable fortress in another world for Hitler. Maybe that's what happened. People were talking about this long before he died, right? It makes sense because this is something that would have been very, very planned out and there's more evidence that supports that. On June 2nd, 1945, two months after World War II was over, these boats went out to Argentina and it was said that this was for scientific purposes. This was for mapping and weather and all this stuff, which is complete BS because later on declassified reports came out proving that it was a classified military operation. So conspiracy theorists believe that there was a base out in Argentina, a Nazi base, where a lot of the Nazi officials and leaders were taken to live out there in hiding and escape. And Argentina was a pretty safe place to do so. It was relatively close enough to get there. On top of, they were pretty tolerant of Nazis. They weren't going to hurt anybody who came into their country like that. They were pretty much going to turn a blind eye, which I believe they did. And it was just very accessible and thought out the way this all worked and the way they were transported over there. In 1942, it was even documented, again, a declassified document, that Martin Bor Foreman was talking about funneling billions of dollars in gold that was stolen over somewhere where it would be safe. And later on, this makes a lot of sense because basically conspiracy theorists believe that a lot of these Nazi officials, Hitler included, survived because they took a lot of that money and put it into the Argentina and American stock market. So they were able to live out secretly without having to attend like a regular job or anything. They could just survive off of that money, which I think they did. This is where things get pretty crazy. June 8th of this year, 2017, in Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina in a suburb right outside of there they found a secret room hidden behind a bookcase where there was a wall and then there was a door. And behind the door, there was the largest collection of Nazi artifacts ever to be found in history. Why would those just randomly be there? Probably because Hitler was living there or other Nazi officials and they smuggled them over to Argentina. And they must have been doing this for a while, like I said, planning things because there's no way they could have just smuggled those in a couple of suitcases through the rat lines and on the boats and things like that. There was even a photograph of Adolf Hitler himself, which is why a lot of people, conspiracy theorists believe that he was the one actually residing there for years and years and years. I do believe at this point he would have passed away from old age, but I don't think that he committed suicide years and years ago, like we've been told and we've been taught in history textbooks because being the dictator that he was, I just don't think he would have given up that easily and taken his own life like a Romeo and Juliet thing. It makes a lot more sense that he would have thought this out and escaped when he had all these supporters and people backing him up. Nobody saw him actually die and they can't find his remains to this day. And I've talked about conspiracy theories like this in the past on my channel, like the one about Elvis, where I believe that he died and escaped somewhere because he was seen at an airport and all that other stuff. I can link that down below if you want to check it out. I really do think this happens more commonly than people would think because it honestly wouldn't be that hard. If there's no physical body, yeah, it's pretty freaking easy to just escape and then just say that somebody died. I feel like in this day and age, people want to see the body, but back then, no, people just took the Germans word for it. And again, how ironic, how convenient that the Germans said he died. They're going to say that because they just want everyone to believe that and they want to put him into hiding. So that being said, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you want more conspiracy theories because I can definitely do some more for you guys. Subscribe if you are new here. Turn on post notifications by hitting that bell button right next to the subscription box. I also have a Patreon if you guys want to check that out where I have a private Snapchat, exclusive photo shoots, etc. That will be linked at the top of the description box. Follow my social medias. I will have them on the screen for you guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Later, alligators. Bye.